Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, I finished up as far as I'm going to go on that uh, Hillman Imp car that was imported oh, roughly about 30 years ago. We did an, uh, pretty much an assessment on it and was able to get it running. Still needs brakes and clutch work done to it. Nice clean car, but again, it still needs more done to it. Not my car, so it's not up to me what does and doesn't get done. But what we are doing is taking that one off the trailer we are putting this one on the trailer. This is a 50s Morris Oxford. It came from the same location and this one's been sitting roughly the same amount of time. It's been stored indoors. I also know nothing about this car, neither. And I've never seen one, never heard of one. And uh, so we're gonna go bring this back to the shop and take a look of what it has, do an assessment essentially on it, and then hopefully try to get it running. This one was imported on that date. So it's been a good 33 years that it hasn't been run, but it was stored in a, a you know, a quality building. It wasn't like it was in a tent garage or anything. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get that swapped over to the trailer and uh, we'll get it back to the shop and get a better look at it and we'll start getting into it. Well, I got it back at the shop and unfortunately one of the front tires is dragging. So hopefully there's gonna be enough tilt on the trailer. We can get her to roll back onto the lift. See how it does. Yeah, let's see if we can influence gravity a little by Really? <laughs> That's pretty steep. All right, now that we got on the lift, let's go take a peek around. I've never dealt with any of these before. I know nothing about them, which makes it fun for me. Interior looks pretty decent. Let's go get a light on. It's held up pretty well. Smells like old leather. Doesn't smell like mice or anything. Yeah, the interior looks actually pretty decent. How's the headliner? That looks pretty good too. My guess this would be like basic transportation around that time. It's the 50s. I don't know what year it is. I don't see any tags on the doors yet. How many miles are on it? Or kilometers, I should say. Well, that's in miles per hour. 60? I think it says 60,000, 61,000. Huh. Looks like it's mostly original paint. I do see some, like I don't know what's going on right there in the door and then something on the fender there. But I think it's original paint. Again, he imported it and then Never used it, and that's the date on it, 42089. So it's roughly 33 years it's been sitting. And the other car that we did from the same location was that Hillman Imp, and the gas tank was drained on that, so that helped that out greatly. Let's go open the trunk and the hood, see what we got going on inside there, and then we'll go lift it up. I don't know if we need a key or not. Is this lock in the place? Third hand, there we go. It's got a bunch of junk in the trunk. Is that an inner tube? <laughs> it looks pretty decent. I don't see anything painted in or repairs or anything. Let's go pop the hood. I found a rod on the inside to get it to wing up. Else we got to pickle under here to get her to go. That might do it. There, I see it. Ah. There. <laughs> Is this how this game's gonna go? Let's go take a peek. 
we got. It's definitely a simple engine bay, huh? You have to figure out if this is 6 volt or 12 volt. And we also need to figure out if it's positive or negative ground. How are we going to go about doing that? I'm not sure yet. What if we could see anything on, say, the generator or the starter? It's written on them anywhere. What that says right there, that might be upside down for you. Let's go take a little bit of scotch right. We'll clean that off. See if it reveals anything. Also, maybe the battery terminals. Usually on a battery, one terminal is larger than the other. So it only fits one direction. You know what I mean? They might be the same though. On this one, I don't know. But generally on a battery, one terminal is larger than the other. That might give us an indication. Too bad it doesn't have the old battery in it, right? Let's go see if that has anything there. Yeah, it says 12 volt right there. I believe that's going to be 12 volt. Let's continue to see if any other info comes up. Yeah. Two? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Now I'm questioning it. <laughs> I know it's upside down for hard for you to see. Uh, let's go keep poking around. See if you can find anything else that says a voltage on it. What about that thing right there? What is that? Is that like a brake light switch? Brake, looks like brake lines go to it. And that says 12, looks like 12V on it right there also. Okay, now we just gotta figure out which way the polarity goes. Let's go grab a dead battery and see how the terminals are. So conventional would be like this. That'd be the positive. It seems like it's sitting a little proud on it. Let's go see if the negative Negative seems about right. Give her a. This battery's pretty, pretty done anyway. Might not have anything in it whatsoever. All right, I think we're pretty confident that's the direction it goes. Of course, the wires are the same color, right? Doesn't help things much. So this is. It's going to be backwards because this is going to the ground of it. It seems like it fits that. It seems, let's go, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, before we start troubleshooting, let's go lift it up in the air and see how the underside looks. Yeah, let's go peek. Looks like it's got two main round rails that run down the center of the car. The frame, yeah, funky suspension, huh? Little spindly little post. Tie rods are way up, up high. Huh. What's it use for a shock? I wonder if something up under the hood where that lever that lever is. I don't see any kind of dampening. It's like a cast aluminum oil pan. Watch your head. Trans is dripping a little bit. I don't know if it's a three speed or a four speed. Unibody car. Little spindly muffler going back. I think somebody made a heat shield. Or I don't know if that's factory. A little shield from the floor. Looks pretty decent. I don't see much corrosion of any sort. It looks like oh, the gas tank looks nasty, huh? Looks like it's got a drain plug though. Hopefully that's all been drained out, like the other one was. What we got for rear suspension? Regular shocks. Looks like somebody painted it. Yeah, the silver's definitely been painted over. What if they're just trying to stop it from rusting or aesthetics? Again, being underneath. Maybe that was a. Actually, looks like the floor might have been too. It's got kind of like a. I don't know if you can tell, like a weird brush pattern. I don't know. I think a lot of these cars were. You know, their assembly lines are more of like a, a hand-built thing. It wasn't a uh, mass production. I'm guessing. I don't know for completeness on it. Emergency brake cables. Looks like everything's... I don't know if there's any gear fluid left in it. 
Oh, see, that's probably the shock right there. That little dampening cylinder up in there. And then ground strap jumping across on the chassis. And torsion bars are what holds the spring for the, just like a Mopar. Just long twisty torsion bars. All right, let's go back up top, get some wrenching. Yeah, let's go check some fluids, see what's in it. There's anything after cool. Bone dry, whether it leaked out, I don't know. And we've got our dipstick in it. And it's looking pretty chalky. It's uh, chalky, opposite of chalky. Got oil in it, towards the full side. Pretty dark for it being sitting that long. Usually all the dirt kind of settles out of it. Uh, let's go pop the plugs on it and we'll dribble a little bit of oil down each cylinder just a, as a preventative maintenance. Yeah. Also looks like somebody changed one of the wires, huh? I see a blue one sitting up there. Actually, none of them. This one doesn't match neither. Let me uh, mark them. Oh, they're falling apart as I'm taking them off. Let me go mark them. I'm just gonna put dots on them. One dot for number one cylinder. You know what I mean? Two for number two. Three for three. And we'll just call the front one number one cylinder. All right, let's get them out of there. Might be one of those <laughs> we're gonna go see. All right, that's got a post on top of the plug. That one doesn't, it's open threads. That one's got a post on top. That one doesn't. It's open threads. <laughs> so I don't know if somebody was just cheap doing maintenance on it and we're using whatever they had. Hopefully the whole car is not like that. Let's go see. A little carbony. That one's real dry. See it. A little bit of rust looking on the threads of that one too. Yeah, that one's carboned up like number one. And can we get to that one? Yeah, that one's carboned up like normal. So number two cylinder looks like it pulled out a little bit of rust. It's a little bit more rusty than the others. Still looks like it has the carbon, but possibly suspect just by the rust that's on it. You can see what I mean by the caps. Every other one had one on it. And the wire, the inside of the wire has a different setup to grab those. So it's, the plugs are like that because of the wires. So that engine hasn't turned in 30 years. And just to help it out, we are going to give a little bit of oil on each one. Now this is a flathead, the valves are off to one side, coming up in the bottom of the block, not shooting down. But the engine is sitting where the piston is like this, it's not on an angle. So when we put that oil in, what's nice is it goes around the whole top of that cylinder and kind of coats it. I want to get some of that in there before we try turning it, because generally, even if it was in a, a good climate, if you were to take the cylinder head off, you'd probably see a little bit of scaling of rust. Hopefully, like the head gasket doesn't fail and the water jackets allow coolant to go into one of those cylinders, especially the one that we saw that had that rust on it. So um, we'll find out. Let's go see if we can get a breaker bar or something on the front of the engine. I don't know if there's an access port or something. Out front, if we can put something on it to get it to turn out. We think it's probably, I don't know. Looks like I might be able to get something. Possibly turn it by the generator. That nut right there. Not much room, huh? I'll get something. In the process of looking it over, I'm looking right here. It looks like this maybe had a hole or a crack or something. And there's a little bit of putty on the top of that head. I don't know if that was a leak right there. Kind of looks it, doesn't it? Well, we'll find out. I guess this car is old enough to <laughs> put a crank in. I guess maybe crank it over by hand is my guess. So I don't know if that goes right through to that pulley. I would think so. 
I don't know if there's anything in the trunk. Yeah, it goes right to the crank. Let's go take a peek in the trunk. See if there's a rod that's in there that we can access the engine. Let's see what we got here. That looks like the whole jack assembly. Well, I think it would be kind of. Well, you know, whatever you use for cranking a jack up, maybe it would be the same. No, that's not going to do it. We got in there. Feels like a gear. That's not a good sign. <laughs> that, yeah. Was somebody in there before us? Yeah, it's got a chopped up. It's probably the cam gear would be my guess. Been there a day or two. Do we see that little rod anywhere? I wonder if we can make up something to get in there. We're not trying to start it, we just want to spin it around, make sure nothing's gonna hit or clank or bind up and do damage to it. Yeah, I don't see anything. I'm gonna take a quick peek inside the car. Yeah, I don't know if that seat flips up or out or Sorry about the shaky cam. Any critters come running out? A couple more hiding spots, we don't see anything. Just some soundproofing. Nope. I'm up under the car, where's where that little cam is? And it looks like you would put a rod in, it would have like a, a T-bar going across with catch on it. And then when the car started, it would kick it off. That's what these little ramps are for. But if we're trying to make up that, it looks like it might have a, a nut on the outside surface of it. Let's see if we can find a socket that'll fit that. If that's the case, that'll make life a lot easier. You think a deep socket would go right on that. But it kind of pushes it away. I think this sits so proud of it. But the wall, the socket only has so much depth to go in, and that doesn't fit it great either. But throw a uh, ratchet on there, see if it's good enough to get it to turn. I got a socket hammered on there. Let's see if that is enough bite for us. Let's turn it. Feels pretty good, too. That's two revolutions, that's all we need. I'm gonna go spin it a little bit more just to get the oil splashing around a little bit. Yeah. Let's go see if the starter will do anything. Well, I think I'm gonna go with positive ground. I'm trying to come up with a, it's gonna be 10,000 comments saying here's what you should, do, should have done. I'm trying to figure out what would be the best way to kind of check it. You know, again, there was no old battery in it. And I'm just going by the way the terminals are. I'm going to, you know, whatever you probe, it's still going to go, whether it's positive or negative ground, it, the, nothing's going to change as far as the wiring. It's not like I can go take like the coil. Okay. The hot side of the coil goes to what? I don't know because it doesn't, it, it's just going to go to a turn. It's going to go to this terminal, this one that doesn't go to the ground, whether this is positive or negative, it still doesn't answer that question. So I think what we'll do is we'll unplug the generator just so it's not trying to make any power and put anything out and feed back into the system. And possibly if what we can do is if we get it running, if and when we get it running, we'll stick with if, <laughs> uh, we'll take a test light on it or a meter and we'll see if it says positive or negative. And if, if that's the case, we'll know what the generator is putting out. So if I go from the body to the post and it puts out says positive then we know we're right if we go the other way around it says negative then we know it's uh, the other direction that makes sense <laughs> i would think the generator would, the uh, starter rather would work either way let's go find out let's unplug those if they come off so that should be the where the power goes out so no matter what this is still going to go to this terminal whether it's positive or negative, again, we don't know the answer to that. 
and we'll get them out of there so it's not trying to back feed into the generator and screw that up and uh, maybe we'll just get the jumper pack we can hook that would be positive ground right let me see all those terminals you guys can see what I'm doing I'm just gonna eye up on those terminals I'm trying to figure out which one fits That one definitely does not go on there. So that's the hot. I was trying to go on that positive lead and it's not even close to fitting down on that one. Yeah, we're going with that. <laughs> well, I said it's very nice of them to put a little jumper pack shelf right where we need it. And all right kind of a weird feeling looking negative to positive and the battery's dead but this should have a charge to it Let's see if we get the arcing and this has a I believe a pedal on the floor that you push up should make contact on these for the starter Let's see if we get anything there we go no smoke <laughs> Let that spin for a second. You want to do a compression test? See what we got? Let's go pop the cap off real quick too. Set that to the side. Make sure our, our rotor is spinning, judging from the busted cam gear we saw. Good. Yeah, let's go get a compression test. I don't think it's going to be very high in this flathead, but let's go see what we got. This is oil too, so the numbers are actually going to be higher because of the oil. It helps clog all the gaps. I hear spark. And why would I hear spark if there's no, if the key's not on? I hear spark. Maybe it's just some, I don't know. <laughs> we'll worry about that later. Let's see if we get anything. Not registering. Let's see if I can look at it. Not really. Oh, you know what we need to do? We open the throttle. There's, there's where our malfunction is. Let's go get a pair of vice grips. We'll pinch it on that, on that throttle, open it up so air can get sucked in. Yeah, if you don't have the throttle open, you don't want to show compression just because it, 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 it's always under vacuum. I don't know if that's the best way to put it. Choke. I don't know what it uses for choke. Let's go try it again. See if that does anything for us. Not sure anything on that one. Let's go right down the line, see if we get anything else. No, that one's firing. That one shows 70 PSI. That one's showing 50 PSI. And can we get on this one? Slower, huh? That one is roughly 70, 75 PSI also. Let's go try number one one more time. You can hear the less resistance on it too. Yeah, that one's showing like 30. That may go away when it runs a little bit. A lot of times it's just corrosion around the valve, like rust or crud or carbon. It gets around the valve, so when the valve goes to seat, it doesn't seat flat all the way. And sometimes as soon as it runs, it cleans itself up. Let's go put a key in the ignition and we'll put the cap on it, see if we get any spark. I swear like it sounded like it had spark. It was probably jumping across the cap. Real quick, before you even put the key in, let's just see what it does. There we 
right, right here. And we're looking right there. No, no spark. I just go turn the key on. I'm not sure what's making noise, but as soon as I turn the key on, something goes clunkety clunk. What do you think? Of course, now it's not doing it. <laughs> yeah, something, I don't, I would think it would be a mechanical fuel pump in the 50s. I wouldn't think it would be electrical. All right, let's go crank it. See if we get spark now. No spark. Let's, uh, can we get the coil wire out of it? I wonder if we can just... Yeah, this is gonna hurt. <laughs> Let's, uh, what do we got close to get to? Not allowing it, uh, right there. Nothing. All right, we got no spark. Could be because the battery's hooked up backwards. <laughs> I don't know. Let's go. So you could tape that plug wire down someplace where it'll. Looks like it should jump for us without touching. There's too much oil on here. Yeah. Can you get it? I'll leave it like that. He is still on. Let's pop the rotor off. Let's just snap those points open and closed. Are they in the, I think they're in the open position right now. Yeah, they are. Let's just go bump that so that they're closed. There we go. And let's just see if we can just get the, there it goes. Yeah. There you got her. All right, let's go take a, file and drag it across those points right there there we go yeah, let's go clean those and that should bring our spark back hopefully let's dock them doctor them up a little bit still even with the polarity being backwards on the battery i think everything would still function i think i had a car once before it was a uh, an early beetle, six volt beetle, and the directionals wouldn't work, and the charging system wouldn't work. And after I went through it, I found you know somebody replaced the terminals like that are on here. You normally have one red, one black. And you just kind of automatically hook it up, and the, and the beetle, the battery is underneath the seat, so we don't get to see where the terminals are going. And what it was, they put a red terminal on the ground, and vice versa. So the battery was hooked up backwards. Car started, ran, drove. Charging system wouldn't work, and again, the directionals wouldn't work. Are the two things that came up? Don't know. I probably didn't have a radio, but yeah, that was the two issues that I found. Hopefully, that's good enough. Let's go put the cap back on it, the rotor back on it, give it a spin, and see if our spark plug makes a little bit of arc for us. Hopefully, that's a mechanical advance underneath that little bit of play. It's a set of weights on springs that flip out as it spins faster, and it moves the timing. And that's what you're seeing there with that little bit of noise in that spring. All right, see if that plug sparks now. Please. You hold it. I'm waiting to get zapped. <laughs> Kind of, sort of. Not great. Not every fire, but it is sparking. Let's go throw the plugs back in it and let's see if we can get that air cleaner off of there and try to dribble a little bit of fuel in it. See what it does. What if you want to take that whole air cleaner assembly right out of there? It looks like it's got a bolt on each side holding the flange to it. And we got a long one going through there. Looks like the air cleaner is cracked on the back side here. Bust it out. Uh, we just need to be able to inject a little bit of fuel. Uh, I don't know. You think right there would be our best bet? There's any place we can, you know, we can do the fuel line. We'll do that later. Can we get in here? I think this is just a big barrel slide. Can we dump gas in there? I don't think so. I think I just screwed something up. <laughs> 
Then we can go back together. Everything's still working. Yeah, let me get, we'll take it off, I guess, right there. Get this whole piece off the side. We're going to take a look at it. It's probably, it's not going to be an oil bath, but it doesn't look like it's something that, it looks like it's metal on the inside metal screen. So when I turn that key on, that must be an electric fuel pump that's over here when I was making the clunking noises that I heard. It only fired a couple of times though, which unfortunately, hopefully, eh, it doesn't have fuel in it. That would suck. You want to... Let's go crack this hose off real quick. Now let's just go spin it. We'll put the plug wires on it, spin it, see what we get, go from there. Kick Joe to the other side, give us a little bit of room. Need a little bit of room over here. Let's go see if we can get underneath. Let's go lift that up. Past it. I'm gonna give her a little, little squirt. Let's see what she does. What? Start doing like and that. It's like the contacts are overheating in the starter switch. Just a little bit of cranking. You see where it's getting hot and smoking? I'm gonna have to loose. Bit. Let's try that again. Keep your tail out of the fan. Come on, baby. Yeah, I think we may have to take these apart and clean them. It sounds like it's got like a high resistance going across them. So, like, I wiggled them around a little bit and it helped it. How about that one? Just give her one more. I'll put a spark checker on it too. It'll look right there, see if that thing flashes for us. That's a no. <laughs> uh, did we lose it? My guess would probably be on the points again. That spark was kind of weird in itself let's um i guess should be sparking right now the key's on and they're closed yeah lost it again um let's coil's warm once it's hot but it's warm Try cleaning them one more time and then we're going to take a test light. We'll go probe around see if we got power. I'm just going to watch the points. I think we lost it. Oh, there you go. We're sparking again. All right, let's go throw that rotor on real quick. Let's see. We get it out by the plug. Let's see if we get that to flash. Now we got nothing here though. Hmm. Rotor is one piece. I don't see that being an issue. Sometimes there's a resistor across the center of the rotor. It might just be weak. <clears throat> Throw a plug in there. Just got a generic plug in there. See so what we get. It sparks. Not great. And again, that other, that test one's not even doing anything at all. Uh, I wonder if we could drop a little bit of fuel down each plug hole into our giving it a fire. I got to charge our jumper pack too. It sounds like it's a little low. I got a big old battery charger on there. I think what 
wasn't helping. That battery, I think, has got a dead cell in it. So when I hooked the jumper pack to it, I think the jumper pack was getting drained into that battery. Let's see what we get. Let's see if it spins faster. Shot. That's a good shot. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it lives. It definitely has an exhaust leak down there somewhere, huh? <laughs> nice. Where's that all coming out of? Right, probably right there where the flange meets it. Yeah. Hmm. Let's go squirt her one more time, give another, another fire up. See what we got coming out of the tailpipe. Uh, plus I put a bunch of oil in it too, so that's where a lot of that smoke comes from. Nice, it'll live. Yeah, let's try it again. I think the bottle's still in there, right? Might be able to run it off of that. Sucking the bottle dry. <laughs> it was feeding itself. It drew all the fuel right out of the bottle. Sucked it right out through the intake. There you go. <laughs> it was self feeding itself. Let's see if it's got a little bit left to go burn off. Yeah, it used up all the fuel. All right, good. Let's go look into the fuel system. What we have, what's going on, and if we need to start getting that part of it addressed so that it kind of stays running. So let's get that off of there, and we'll see if anything comes out of it. I know I didn't catch it on camera in the beginning, but the when I first put the key on, I heard thumping again. I, get, I think it's the electric fuel pump that's over there on the wall, and then it stopped. I don't know if it stopped, Due to the fact that it put fuel out, or did it stop? Because it's just got a bunch of crud on the inside of it, and that's all it can move. And this, I think this is a tickler. I think this pushes the float down and allows fuel to go in. Let's go see if we can take that float ball right off. We can take an assessment of what's inside of the carburetor looks like, too. Does that go? What is that? Is that holding the float ball on? I think it'll pop free. Feels like yeah, it feels like there's more to that bowl going across. All right, as we were, let's go get that off of there, that banjo nut. And we'll throw that back on. It's got a weird, like, window. Huh. I don't know what the purpose of that is. It's got like a notch cut out of it. Let's throw that back on. These are slide curbs compared to. I, I don't know if it has a butterfly too. I think it does. I think this kind of works, I'm guessing, more of like a choke. Originally mixed. Yeah, let's go see what'll fit that. A lot of hardware on this. What's it called? British Standard? What's the name for it? I think that's right. Looking pretty dry, but I would think you'd still hear that fuel pump. If like the fuel pump was sucking air. I think it would continue to go on. Let's go. Let's give her a crank. Actually, the key's off. The keys need to be on for the electric fuel pump to work. There we go. See if we get anything out of it. What's the start? Is that a filter that wants to come out? Get that out of there so I don't lose it. Piece of screen. Yeah, nothing. Let's look at a test light. Let's see if we got power going over to this fuel pump. 
There it goes. <laughs> yeah, something's coming out of it. Let's uh, shut it off. There we go. So shut that off and get a cup or something underneath it. And we'll do like a urine sample. I don't like much of anything. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty golden now. Let's get a cup. Throw it underneath there and control it a little bit. I wonder if we can uh, take it so we can take that, just take that wire on and off and kind of run it and not run it. I don't want to break anything either though. Yeah, let's see if we can get that off of there. We just can kind of, actually, you know what we can do? We just take a jumper wire right to it and, and power lead the key off. Good idea. Actually, I hooked up the remote start button. It's just a wire going from the fuel pump to the hot side. I hope we're going to call it the hot side. And that should, there we go. Let's see what that does for us. So it's not moving much fuel. Just quit. I'm gonna hit it again. <laughs> oh, the reliability of that's gonna be. Let's try putting some fresh fuel in the tank. See if it leaks anywhere. And if not, we'll try to push that through. We'll, we'll have some clean fuel pushing the old stuff through and hopefully we can get some clean stuff coming up into there. Oof. Yeah, it smells like 1989 vintage. Let's give her a drink, see what it does. Yeah, we definitely think that this engine would want some kind of lead substitute due to its age. But for the short time it'll run on this, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Right, see that get crazy? Make sure it's not pouring out the other side. I don't see anything under the car yet. <laughs> see if that was enough to wet the pickup. We'll go try that. See if that's enough to go push it through. If not, we'll load it up with some more. Let's see what we get now. Can you see? Sounds like it's working harder. There it goes. Am I like? Let's um dump that. A new charged up light. We'll try it again. We'll see if we get some clear stuff coming through. Yeah. Yeah, it smells like it looks. Alright, fresh light. Fresh cut. I tell you, when the guys brought these over and then did the maintenance of putting them away, just draining the fuel out definitely made a big difference and how much damage it has now like if that had a cruddy fuel tank you wouldn't be seeing that at all i think it, a little bit more of that should be just fine you want to take the carb apart you just want to try winging it yeah i want to wing it too well actually we could test it before we even try to run it we'll just let it fill up the see if it starts pissing out anymore that's like i see dripping I think it's at the yep. <laughs> I don't think that float's working. Yeah. Nope. All right, we're going in. Uh, I guess we should take the banjo back off again. Well, we got two bolts on there. I would think is there anything, any heat rise or anything underneath? I should get a mirror and take a peek. I think it's just these two bolts, that line, and that line. We'll get it on the bench. Take a look at it. Wentworth Standard, that's the name I was looking for. Which they have, they're, they're their own size. It's not metric, it's not SAE. Wentworth Standard, I think is the deal. Essentially, a lot of the six point stuff, you can get close to it and unbolt it with it. Between the two, a metric and a, I'm gonna call it a standard set. Right, did we get everything? What's this rod going down? What's that apparatus? Is that our choke? Hmm. 
we gotta do to get that off of there? That and that pinch point. Yeah. A little more digging. Hey, right. I've never taken one of these apart before. <laughs> First time or everything. Uh, I said we try to get that float ball assembly off of there. Got like a weird key to it. I don't know if that's a vent. Well, now it comes off. So that's our needle and seat right there. So that should shut off the fuel once the chamber fills, float fills. It's a float move. Well, there's your problem. <laughs> that float is supposed to float. Feels like it's frozen in its place. Yeah. So what holds that down? Is it just stuck with sludge or? That's pretty in there. You don't think it's part of that thread, do you? Part of this? Let's go throw some, let's throw some vice grips on the stud and see if that stud will turn and take that float out with it. You figure that stud's gotta be threaded into something. I don't, I don't see anything coming out the bottom, so. Let's just go see if, I don't wanna break anything neither. Uh, that's not moving. Can we take that whole assembly off? We need for that. So maybe we could throw that whole thing in the ultrasonic cleaner. I don't know. My guess is there's corrosion between here and the post and it's just kind of stuck on it. I don't want to damage that float because we're not going to find another one of those. So we'll take that assembly. We'll put that in there as one. Let's go take this off of here. Just another banjo nut. It's like that could use some cleaning too. Let's keep digging. See what else we got? It looks like that plunger is, uh, we got some carbon on it. Velocity stack, is that the name of them? Is that what they're called? No, velocity stack is, um, hold that thought. As you were. So what does this mechanically do? Does that mechanically lift that whole assembly up? So it just opens a jet passage. Yeah. So it opens up space around the needle. There's the needle and draw fuel up. Probably works two ways. This gets pulled up probably by velocity or vacuum. And then when you give it throttle, it looks like, I don't know if you guys can see it in there in the light, so I'm trying to get it. You can see the center drops down. And enriches the fuel also. What if it takes place like an accelerator pump? It's just squirting a uh, thing of fuel and it just allows more fuel until it revs up. 
and opens it. I think we're gonna leave that part of it alone for now. Let's look. So, float maintains a level of fuel. Fuel gets siphoned over. So fuel comes in the top, maintains a level of fuel in here. It gets drawn across through that and up through there. Up through there, across, and into that jet. And that's how the fuel gets in there. Does it have a air fuel mix on it? I don't see anything to you. Is there an air? A way to adjust? I see idle speed for, it looks like. Maybe this, maybe you can turn that assembly right there. It looks like it, doesn't it, with the spring underneath it. If you need to adjust the height of where that is, I wonder if you could just turn this up and down and it sets that level. That's what I'm guessing. All right, let's go through this whole thing. Let me see, we throw the whole thing in an ultrasonic cleaner, but I don't want to damage. I'm trying to see around the sides of it, see if I can see a bunch of crud down below. Well, either way, this has to get freed up. So we go soak this. Can we soak all this stuff? Is there anything here that I just want to watch out for gaskets that I don't have? We'll leave this alone. Get that out of there. I take it we're gonna have to put oil back in that later. Let's go wash this, this. Remember that spring goes, that doesn't need to. All right, so the end with the, the end with the tight hole <laughs> goes down. So leave that. And we'll get that stuff soaking and maybe we'll jump on something else. All right, well, it's doing its thing over in the ultrasonic. What do you want to pick around on now? What about, you want to try putting some coolant in it? Or water for now. Let's see if it leaks out anywhere. I don't know if they drained it out or if it ran out. Take a quick peek at the hoses, make sure there's nothing obvious that's like totally rotted right off of it anywhere. Is that light? Is that lower hose hook? Look. I don't see anything in the radiator, damage wise. Yeah, let's go throw some water in it. See what happens. We could probably, uh, now that it's spun a little bit, try a compression test again. See if that number one cylinder, whoops, yeah, that's gonna help to find a leak. See if that number one cylinder came up. Make sure I'm not pissing out the bottom right away. See a little drip, but that might be what I splashed over. Let's keep going. Stop it. The other one we did the uh, the Hillman Imp. The water pump was junk on that one. I had to drill it out with a drill bit. And it was frozen solid. We took an air ratchet, got an air ratchet on, it got it spinning. Kind of functioning, you know, it wore out, but at least we got it to operate. Hopefully this one Seems like it spins because the, the belt is still on. There wasn't any restriction. I think the other car, we tried turning it and the uh, engine didn't want to turn, but didn't want to turn because the water pump didn't want to turn. We are, what's got me a little concerned on this car though is that number two spark plug, that little bit of rust that came out of it. I'm just afraid that if the head gasket is beat and it's going into the the chamber. One more load. I do not see anything pouring out of the bottom of the car so far. It's a good sign. So I'm listening to it. I'm hearing like gurgling. I'm trying to figure out where it's coming from. 
I'm like, he's got heater hoses going somewhere. Like, where's, where's the noise coming from? It's the battery on the charger. <laughs> the battery's kind of like percolating on the inside. Decent amount of water. It's probably we're up over about two gallons right now. Open the door of the car. It's probably. I'm probably filling the inside of the car with it right now. <laughs> Heater core is gone. All right, that is to the top. Hopefully that settles out. It doesn't keep flowing down. Let that set up for a minute. Make sure that holds everything that it should. I don't see anything. Hear it? I think it's the battery. I'm gonna go shut that charger off. Yeah, that's what it was. I don't see anything pouring out of the water pump, although it looks kind of cruddy. I'm looking right there. Jesus, scared the crap out of me. And right there at the end of that stud of that water pump. See some corrosion on that. Holy crap I splashed around doesn't help much now, does it? That's probably the oil filled like a canister that you would change. Uh, oh, we did a compression test. That's what we can do. Let's go blow that crap out of around those plugs. Get those plugs back out. And uh, give her another spin. We'll probably, maybe we'll do the one that threads in. We'll get a better number. Get the plugs out. Let's go spin it real fast. Make sure no water comes out of any of the cylinders. No, they look good. Go get a good compression tester on it. I right, see how we did. Let's see. We call that 80 pounds on number one. Doesn't take much running to get it to get polished back up. What it run for? 60 seconds for us. But that's all it generally needs to clean the crap off of. It may still improve a little bit more over time. Plus, we pushed all the oil out of it. Whatever oil was helping seal it is gone. And number two. I don't know if these flatheads get for compression too. Call that one 100. It's also kind of like how close they are to each other. Like you don't want a cylinder that's 150 and then another one that's 80 because the one that's 80, if it was by itself, would probably run. But when you're trying to tune the 150 to run and the 80 to run, it's gonna skip a beat. Let me go write that down. All right, number three. Call that 75. I know on air cooled V dubs, you kind of want to be. You really don't want anything under 100 on a V dub, air cooled. And you really don't want much of a, like a 20 pound difference between them. Just shy of 100. I bet you if it was spinning a little faster, it'd probably do 100. So, I got about 25 pounds difference between them. But at least that first cylinder came up. That first cylinder before was doing like, what, 15 pounds? Took the wire off the fuel pump so that was, isn't gonna run. Let's go turn the key on and see what comes alive. That's pretty one big ass steering wheel. Let's, um,. So the gas gauge moves a little bit and the alternator gauge flicks a little. I don't know if anything will... That's wipers. I don't think that would be headlights. <laughs> uh oh. That's got like 37 different positions on it. I'm not quite sure what that is. What's S? 
What would S be? Unless that one say L. Ah. <laughs> S is start. <laughs> uh, I would say lights maybe. What's that? Ah, you know what that is? Yeah, it's working. That's a semaphore on that one side. Yeah, so there's no directional. That's the directional. Let's go see what that looks like if it lit up. I heard it mechanically come out. I wonder if the generator needs to be running and it runs off the generator to power lights. Oh no. Well, it's got parking lights on. Oh yeah. Check that out. <laughs> Those are called semaphores. That's your directionals. Back then, it would come out the side of the car. VWs also had those. Uh, not so much over here. I think the other side is missing. And it's just like an electrical magnet. That allows that to come up. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I wonder if surprised they don't get broken off. Yeah, I think the other side is missing. And it drops back in when you flip it back down. What else we got for lights? Tail lights, plate lights working. Uh, I don't know about headlights. I mean, maybe the car has to be running for the headlights to go. Let's see if we can figure that out. Was that the button that had like 37 different positions on it? What's this? It's probably choke, right? Feels like some kind of like a choke. Is that anything? I'm afraid to hit stuff. Is that like another glove box? What is that? No. This on this side is a glove box. I don't know what that would be. Like hazard lights or something? What would. Like a brake light test? They both push in. I don't know. I could make up stuff. <laughs> All right, that start. Uh, let's see if they come on and off. <clears throat> yeah. So, wherever the L is, is parking lights. What would headlights be? I see my other stuff hanging in, down below. I don't know what that is. And there's another one over here. I don't know what those are. That's wipers, which I think are stuck. The motor might be stuck because look, it's drawn. It draws a, a bunch of amps. So I think the motor's stuck. I don't know what the deal is. It's got C on. My guess would be choke. Maybe that's where that other that other lever went to. But what would be headlights? Parking lights. Does it have another position? Oh yeah, it does. Duh. <laughs> Let's go see how that does. There you go. Good. Other than the wiper motor, we're gonna not play with that right now. It's not on the top of our... Uh... I can see it going. Probably under the dash too. Let's uh, shut the headlights off, turn those wipers on, and we'll give them a little, that one, yeah, let's give them a little wiggle, see if they decide to do anything. I don't want to cook the motor now, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be for another day. We're not trying to restore the car, we're trying, just trying to do an assessment. What we got, you got a horn? There you go. <laughs> All right, let's turn the key off. And I think we're good. I still like to know what this stuff is. What do you think that is? They push into my... Does it have an oil pressure light? So we got amps. Is that oil? That was dark, you can't see. I see that's oil pressure right there. And I don't know what this is. 
I'm sure somebody will answer that. How about the shifter? I feel like it wants to go into any gear. Yeah. How about these two? One should be like third or first in reverse. How about our pedals? Let's go try the clutch. The clutch is mechanical. That should be okay. Gas pedal. It's not hooked up, so it does move though, and I don't want to hit the brakes. We'll deal with that on its own. There's an emergency brake here. It's an emergency brake. What do you think that is? Dash lights? Like dimmer? This seems like it rotates. I don't know. Alright, let's go figure out something else to do. He doesn't see anything. And the other part of the semaphore that's missing. That. Looks like it's missing a piece of the, the chrome that goes with it though. I think it's got a... Yeah, I don't see it under there in that package tray anywhere. It looks like it has a, um, a frame that it sits in. Should kick out though, right? Let's go turn the key back on. Let's see if this one does anything. No. Hmm. How would you access that? It's like somebody already did. It's like they, tried, they pulled pulled in the trim off. Get into it. This vehicle is protected by crook lock. And either they liked a vet or they were a vet. We got this one. It's like a conversion chart from looks like gallons to liters. Almost like it's two different things though, right? Because that one says one gal to four and a half. Oh, it's liters to gallons. It's just going backwards the other way. I don't know what, like when you drive around in Europe, is there like different... Was it sold in both forms? Like, why would you have the sticker here? I don't know what the what the purpose of this would be. I don't see anything that indicates any kind of country. Where's the sticker? What about the inspection sticker? Does it have one? I don't know what that means. So it had something there. I don't see any kind of anything else on it. I'll see any lube stickers, what's um... I'm trying to find a year or two. Let's got an engine and a chassis number. Yeah, a car number and an engine number. That looks like the same as whatever those are up there. No, neither one, they don't match that. <laughs> I don't know if that's a, is that like a build tag? I don't know. One of them's got to be right. Let's go take a quick peek at that float, see if that thing freed up. I'm going to take the battery off of this. That's right, Ben. About a half hour, 20 minutes. Ah, there we go. <laughs> She's free. She popped up on her own. Good. Let's shut that right off. And rescue that. Let's see what the bottom of that looks like. Ooh, that's hot. Yeah, it had sludge in the bottom of it that was holding it. Woohoo! Let's get these out of here. Get them rinsed off. Good. And glad I didn't try forcing that up there. And I'm glad it was still floating in there too. That means it's got a good seal to it. Let's go whoosh it with water. Alright. A little bath. I need an air gun. I gotta blow out some passages. clear I don't want to put this body I thought about soaking it I don't know what's inside it though and we could take it apart but I don't want to kill any of the seals it seems like it's operating as it should can we make the aluminum look nice and pretty on the outside yeah I'm just afraid of di uh, damaging anything in there if we have to go back in we will 
All right, does that have a direction? Is there a top and bottom to that? I would think there would be rub marks from that, right? So that rubs on top. It's like it's in both ways, huh? As long as that moves free. <laughs> and this, I already checked blowing through. I didn't take the needle out, but I blew through it and it seems like it's functioning properly. We're gonna find out if the fuel shuts off when we go to fill it. What did that have? That that on there, right? So it kind of works. It looks like a vent, but why is it cut? Why is that cut on an angle? Is that supposed to do something for us? Yeah, like what's that cut for right there? Just to let air out? It doesn't matter. Where do you think it gets spun around? The clear that right there. I'm not sure what the orientation was with this, so we'll leave that a little loose for now. Uh, we got, can we put them both? Does it matter which one we put on first? So it's gonna be that with the banjo nut, right? All right, that needs to get cleaned up. I'm gonna go take this over to the wire wheel. Is that one more seal? Yeah. I'm gonna take that over to wire wheel and knock all that crap off the outside of it. With that. And that is the passage that gets it over to the carb. And what side was that sitting on? Can you remember? Probably like that. We're gonna find out when we throw it together, right? Mm. I think about right. And then we had this was on top with all its springy guts, which is going to be that. And what did we say? That went down inside there, right? That's going to drop in. So meters are fuel. I don't know if it's got a does it got a direction that it clips in. There it goes. And then this is going to go on top. And I'm going to say we need to put a little bit of oil, probably for that, to move around. And this goes in the center of that. So let's just go get a little bit of oil. I'm just going to go with motor oil. We'll put a couple of drops on that to make sure that that doesn't bind. I guess. I would think air. What lifts that? Probably these, probably that port right there. One of those ports probably shoots air in it and pushes it up. My guess. I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'll dribble a little bit of oil in that. Let's go find some. Yeah, I don't know if. The oil is just for that center slide right there, or is it for that outside? I'm gonna say it's just for down the center. Let's go just give her a couple of, that much in the center. And if we're wrong, we're wrong. We'll deal with it later. I'm sure that gets keyed in, right? So, that's got to lock in and then we can put two screws in it and that should, I think that moves better than it did before. There's gonna be people on here that have had thousands of these apart. <laughs> They're gonna correct me, but that's all right. Sometimes the best way is just taking stuff apart and kind of trying to figure it out. It's good for your, your troubleshooting capacities because you, you learn on this one you can add to other, other things you take apart, how they, how they operate. 
and I find your mind kind of works better as far as remembering it to look up the answer compared to taking it apart and trying to figure it out. I think your your just your memory is that much better. It looks like it holds. So that if that was the throttle, right, and then you hit that, it allows it to lower. I wonder if that's like a a fast idle or a choke the first time you hit it. And that's why it was revving high. And then you do something where this kind of comes down and allows it to idle. That's just a guess on my part. I do not know. I think that's in the right spot. You could rotate that whatever, whichever way that fuel line is when we put that back on. I think it was something like that, wasn't it? Nope. We out of parts? I think so. Let's go throw it back on. Yeah, it's good turn the battery charger back on. I got the fuel pump hooked up again. See if it'll... Oh. <laughs> no. Busted fuel line there, and we're leaking. We're leaking there too. Think that might need a fuel line? Yeah, let's go address that. I'm doing a piece of line on there. I don't think it's ethanol rated. And the clamps are the wrong size, but shouldn't be much pressure there. Build up. Yeah, I got the, and the pump shuts off. Good. And if we tickle this, this will push the float down, and it should. I was thinking it should overflow it. Maybe not. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, put it back together. We should be able to start it and see if it'll run off that carb now. All right, keys on. Give her some battery power. I think we're good to go. Sounds like. There we go. I'm seeing a drip coming off of that fitting. We're going to try to suck that down a little tighter. Come on, stay running. Did you give us some gas? <laughs> I got the firing order right. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's just not like it's a little off. Let's, um, what does that second cable do down below? Hit it again. You're alive. Let it warm up a little bit. That's how we do on the exhaust. I don't see a ton of anything leaking out of it. It's pretty clean, there's no smoke. She's a living. Let's see if we got oil pressure. Alright, we are looking at yeah, 40 pounds. Good. So which knob, what was the one that, hold on, that, that one up there, this one? I don't know what does what. <laughs> it doesn't do anything, see if it'll wrap. There it goes. Feeling like that. <laughs> Let it warm up. Do we have a coolant? Uh, amps fuel. And oil pressure. I don't see anything about coolant. We could probably.
a little warm up till we see some flow going. Yeah, look at that exhaust. Look at the light. Yeah, right at that. Right at the flange. Or if the air cleaner makes any difference to it also. It's warm on the fingers. That was good. Crap, kick it up. It's like rust flakes. That's like rust. So that builds up pressure. Which it does. I'm gonna let it run for a little bit. Open a door. Nice. First fire in 33 years. Except we're weak anything. Somewhere. My guess would be the water pump. Overflow hose. Pushing out the overflow. I want the cap is just no good. See, that's got a seal. And then over pressure. So that's a spring-loaded cap, and if the pressure gets up to 7 psi, it pushes that spring up with that seal and it allows it to go out the overflow. But right now, there's no pressure on it and it's leaking out the overflow. So that cap might just be no good and it's just flowing right out of it. I think that's what's happening. That's okay, we still let it warm up. I keep going into the side for the steering wheel. <laughs> but it's not here. Let's go push that clutch in real quick. I just want to see. I didn't like that, did it? Let's just try to pick any gear. Just see if the clutch will function. All right, we're in gear. Let's let her off a little. See if it grabs. All right, I am all the way out. Oh, there it goes. Okay. That clutch grabs almost all the way, all the way out. Like I'm like this far from being all the way up and it's, it's finally grabbing. That disc might be a little on the worn side, but it does, does grab. Put it back in neutral again. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if we could adjust that. It feels like it doesn't have any free play. Free play is that little bit of, uh, when you first touch it, it kind of, in on the clutch, it's got a throw out bearing that pushes on a pressure plate. Well, that throw out bearing should come off of the clutch plate, so there's a gap in between it, so the throw out bearing's not spinning all the time. If you have too much of a load on it, that bearing is touching, it'll burn out the throw out bearing, plus it's pushing on the clutch a little. And if that's what it feels like right now. It doesn't feel like there's any free play. We can adjust that later. All right, let's go give her a couple of revs. Where's the gas pedal? Shut off. Restart. What do we, we gotta we gotta pull one of these, right? The S. Yes. There you go. <laughs> it's got a neat little wrap to it. Wrap, 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 wrap. <laughs> I think the next thing we, maybe we should tackle is trying to get it to roll. Uh, let's get her up in the air. We'll get the air jack underneath it, and we'll figure out which front tire is locked up and then probably pull that wheel and see what the condition of the wheel cylinder is. That'll give an indication of what the rest of them are like. It's not that one. So it must be this one. Yeah. I don't know what it uses for adjusters. 
Let's go take a peek uh, on the back side of the wheel. Yeah, sometimes it has adjusters on the back side. Like a cam or something, we, or a little peak hole. I do not see anything. And possibly it's under the hub cap. Let's get that cap off of there. We'll see if there's anything we can work with. Yeah, I don't see anything to you. No, I see a little peak hole right there. Gotta be some way to adjust it. Let's get the tire off. It looks like the lug nuts are on backwards. Is that just like a GM nut part of it? You got like a weird look. You see it? Like a, a double castle nut. Let's buzz that off of there, see if there's any, my guess, maybe a little peak hole is supposed to line up to something. Peak hole right there. Problem is we gotta line it up with an adjuster. Maybe we can get like a pry bar in it and rotate it around. And back it off a little. Worst case, we could pull the drum off with a puller. So looking at the back of it, I see the flex line going in and it's got a, a jumper going from one side to the other. So I think there's gonna be a wheel cylinder here, a wheel cylinder on the other side. Each one should have an adjuster on it. Kinda have to, I would think. So, I don't see it on the lower side. Let's try turning it backwards up to here, see if there's an adjuster right there. Get a light in there, take a peek. See something that looks like a a regular screw tip. I, yeah, I never worked on one of these before, so that could be what the adjuster is. Let's go a little further. Yeah. It'd be weird if that's the adjuster. I want to take a peek. What is that? Usually just like a star wheel of some sort that you... You back off. Let's go shove a screwdriver in it, see if it does anything. That might be a little tab. See that little that little arm sticking straight up? That might be something that stops it from ratcheting. Man, it doesn't do anything. I'm gonna continue walking it around to the other side, see if I can see anything over there. As of right now, I'm not seeing anything that's popping out saying, hey, turn me. I'm gonna throw all these back on, protect the threads, and we'll just kind of walk it on them. You can get the, take the drum off, but sometimes you do some damage doing that, it, especially if there's a lip on the drum. A lot of times as you wear brakes, there's an outside rust layer or wear layer that's on the edge of the drum. And as you try to clear the brake shoes, it's just pulling the brake shoes off and kind of tearing stuff. So let's try the path of least damage first. Let's see what we get.
kind of looks the same on both sides. I'm sure I'm missing something how it op <coughs> operates. Hmm. Shut the screwdriver in that one and turn it counterclockwise and it kind of popped. I don't know if it did anything with the drum. Definitely released something though. I can move that brake shoe. See how it feels. Yeah, so, so it's the other shoe. That, that shoe's not touching. So it's the other one that's our issue. There it goes. <laughs> right. Let's go get the dust cap off, get the drum off. We'll take a peek inside and see how things look. That shouldn't be that tight. That should be almost finger tight. I already pulled the cotter pin out. Let's try adjustable first. Am I missing something? It's like two cotter keys in it. The end of it looks pretty like it got bashed on or something. Huh. Alright, we'll keep escalating. We'll try a socket next. Let's see if that'll do it. That one put up a fight, huh? And you definitely do not want us in here, I guess. Go see what is happening in there. Look pretty good, huh? Don't click all too bad, corroded. Drum's got some crap on it. They look pretty good. The thing is, do the wheel cylinders move? So inside of these, there's little pistons with a seal going around it, brake fluid on the back side, and it pushes and moves the shoes in and out. Well, over time, they will freeze up. Not sure what side has the piston. And can we push on that one? I wonder if it's where the adjuster is. Can we just pop them right off of there? Take a look at it. There we go. Yeah. yeah, so it's got a little star adjuster. On the inside of it, on a cam. And which side has a, a pistillon? I'm gonna lower the car a little bit so I can see a little better. Is that a cap that's just sitting on there? Kind of looks like it, doesn't it? We could go in and hit the brake pedal, but I don't think that's a wise move because you can get all the wheels stuck. If these look good. My guess it's under here.
I'd say in the center of that is the piston. This is stuck on there. I think it's actually under it. So it is caught under that wheel cylinder. There's probably a lip around it. The piston, the piston's in the center, and this little metal tab is kind of caught under it. It's probably got a lip underneath it. When it's all the way in, it can't come off. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna break off anyway. I'd say that is not looking good. You can see. Let me go get a little scraper. Yeah, so in between here, where all that crap is coming out, this piston, when you hit the brakes, should rise and fall. And judging by the amount of corrosion that's around it, it's going to be a no. The other car was the same way too. The Hillman Imp. It's the nature of it, just unfortunately. I think the brake fluid over time causes corrosion, is my guess. I'm going to try getting a pair of water pumps on that shoulder and that shoulder just to see if it rotates a little bit. Let's see if we get anything out of it. Nope. Sorry, I figured it seized in that bore. So that's going to be the condition of all of them all the way around. So we'll just put it back together with the adjuster and stuff on it. And we'll call it good enough to roll. And you should probably just leave well enough alone. <laughs> but that's what we're here for. We're trying to do an, uh, an exploration. Do I even bother putting that back on there? It hold, does it hold this? It might. All right, so I'm going to go clean that up a little bit, try to get that all tapped back together, get the shoes back on it, and just put the wheel back together. Hey, well the fronts aren't going to work for us for brakes. Let's go flip the ass end up in the air and we'll see if the emergency brake does anything. Let's see what it's got for e-brake. It's got a lever. That pulls on them. I just want to make sure that we don't screw ourselves by applying that. It looks like we can come with a hammer and tap them off if we have to. The wheels do not turn very well. I don't know if that's brakes or if that is drag from the uh, differential. Not sure on that one. Let's go see. Uh, probably what we should do, is we'll just screw it down here. We'll get underneath like a screwdriver. We'll pry on it, see if we can get the wheel to lock up. Let's try tapping that in the off position or in and see if the wheel frees up any better. Too. It didn't make any difference. I think all of it's going to need a good revamp. So it's all got to kind of come apart. I was hoping to get the emergency brake to work. Let's see if that does anything for us. And about the same. What I wanted to do, I wanted to be able to see if we could test drive it, you know, put it around a little bit. If we can get at least emergency brakes to work. At least get them to work. Yeah. Wheel feels like it's freeing up a little bit. But at the same time, token, I don't want to marry this thing, start getting into all the repairs. Because this is more of just an assessment, what it needs. Like I said, yeah. Yeah. questionable at best. Right, it's been about 
two days since I ran it last. Let's go see if it'll do a cold start. I'm just a jumper pack and everything working up inside the car. Let's see what we get. Is that common with these cars? Make sure you turn those lights off, huh? Yeah, let's see how it does with the uh, buzz box on it. I'm gonna need a good battery. I think I have one that's here. I'll take it out of a car. You smoke in those terminals? Wasn't this like an issue before? Yeah, they're warm. Hmm. Maybe I'll buy a battery. Need one anyway. Yeah, I swapped out the battery. Let's go see if uh, she'll fire on her own. We make a great getaway car. Yeah, leave an extra five minutes early to go to work. I try anytime I tried giving it any gas, it wouldn't do anything. And then I tried pulling what I think is we're gonna call that choke, that lever underneath there. Didn't seem like it made much of a difference. So there may not just be something set up on that correctly. Let's let that warm up a minute. <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> funny rhythm. Stuff those wires you could get. That's gonna be the seal. 
That's just gonna tell it to turn on the charge. Coming from a voltage regulator. Yeah. If you get a big arc, you don't. Okay. We got a real big arc on that. That was hit a plow race back, but I think we pretty much have that squared away. Yeah, that's See if we have anything on the charge gauge. Amped right at zero, so that may not be doing anything. Grab it up and get him. There it goes. I saw it jumping. Trying to find a gas pedal. It's weird though, because the gauge is backwards. It's plus, I, I thought it was discharging, but it's not. It's going in the correct direction. It's going over to the plus. <laughs> That's just weird, having the negative ground like that. It's discharging there. It's been the generator up enough, it starts charging. Another, but another half a gallon of gas in it so it doesn't want to run out. Good thing about the brakes dragging, so we kind of have constant brakes. I'm trying to remember, where, I'm guessing that's first. Let's see how long it takes to stop. Eh, they're gonna free up on us. Let's go take it easy in the sand pit. We'll just try to get it to. Make sure no one's coming. The other thing too, I could shut it off. See how it does over the bumps. Remember that battery's not strapped down anywhere neither. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere, but. Let's try for another gear. Oh, I think that's second. <laughs> it's pretty sturdy as far as the cards. Not very bouncy going over the bumps. It's got no power. Break it up.
Well, it's definitely no speed demon. The clutch is, uh, yeah, it works. Not well, but it's uh, definitely gonna need the clutch. Wheel cylinders all the way around. It's gonna stay running. <laughs> and just some love on the tune-up. I can't find reverse. It's gonna die. <laughs> I can't find reverse. I'm not sure if it's not, you know, you push or pull on a certain angle and it pops in. Seems to be a four speed. All, I have four positions all are forward. I thought one of them would have been reversed, but it's, apparently it's not. <laughs> well guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I did, I had fun kind of playing with something a little different that I'm not familiar with and just kind of learning how they operate. Cool little car. I think he already has it sold. I was gonna make an offer on it. I kind of like the body of it and the condition that it's in. It's not rusty, but you know, there's others. <laughs> All right guys, I'm gonna go sign off. I wanna thank y'all for hanging out with me, having a little bit of wrenching, and we'll do it again soon. Till then, later.